Hello and welcome to another Bendigo IPTV uh, Council Election Special and uh, this morning it's my pleasure to welcome Julie Hoskin. Welcome Julie. Hi Dennis, thanks for having me here. Julie, uh, you've put your hand up for Whipstick Ward and uh, you're a name that's probably been around town for a little while now. What's prompted you to take this step towards Council? I see that there's some major issues that need to be addressed in Council and I think I can make a difference. So I'm putting my hand up because I, I worked in Council as you know. And well, I, I do recall that, and I remember that from some time ago. You worked in the planning area. I worked in the building, and what was the building and planning development group at the time, and uh, that gives me some pretty important inside knowledge of the workings of the council, um, and in areas that most people don't get to see. So it, it, that facilitates the. Um, uh, well, pretty much everything. Everything, everything comes through. Yes, yeah, it's mm. so important to ha understand the workings of the council business side of things. Well, I've heard a couple of different terms used uh, to describe, uh, and I remember Councillor Peter Williams having a discussion with uh, Keith Sutherland, uh, and the word I think that was mostly bandied about was disharmony in council, and that's how a lot of people have seen it perhaps as disharmony rather than dysfunctional. Obviously they function because uh, Councillor Williams pointed out they've achieved a lot, even despite some differences of opinion in some areas. But at the same time, that um, disharmony, how confident are you, because you've come from a fairly, you, you've been not frightened to step up and put your hand up mm. for something you believe in. Yeah. How confident are you, Julie, that you'll be able to work uh, collaboratively with another batch of councillors? To, Provi to provided the councillors are prepared to be honest and open and abide by their, their obligations to act according to the Local Government Act and the councillors' code of conduct then we can, everybody should be able to get along just fine. But if, when people don't do that, and it comes back to being a represent, representative of the people, if they're not doing that, you've got the residents being unhappy with the councillors, then you've got certain councillors who are trying to do the right thing and others that aren't doing the right thing, that's where all the division and the trouble happens. So if they're not getting the fundamentals right, then things will fall over and there will be conflict. The, the key is for the councillors to abide by their own duties, to act for the residents and to work cohesively together and with the business side of council. It's so important to get those very fundamental things in order. And if well, that's done, everybody should get along just fine. I, I can't see any problem. But, you know, um, residents have the right to be heard, to be consulted, to have an opportunity to voice their concerns, and that is, I see, as being the biggest problem. Julie, uh, if you were an average punter looking at the, the field of candidates, and there, it's a Melbourne Cup field in the sense that there's so many, um, if you were there an average punter looking at that, you would look at Julie and perhaps say, well, you've had a, a real uh, identity with the mosque issue. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say to people who say, well, is that, are you a single issue candidate? Are there other, what are, are the other key areas or what are the key areas you think that you want to bring to council if you were successful mm. in securing a four year term? The, the Moss case has been a big issue, of course, but it wouldn't have mattered if it was a footy club room or any other issue. The problem that I was dealing with was um, procedure from, by council, and this is a game where my expertise comes in. I understand what the procedures are that should have been followed in the council. And, um, you know, it was planning, um, planning environment and law that we were dealing with. So any planning application um, or any other issue that is in council should be, you know, those, those basic tenets of council protocols should be followed. And, you know, it wouldn't have mattered, like, again, it wouldn't have mattered what it was. I still would have followed those processes to get, you know, to get justice for, for the resident. What other key things would you see yourself as hoping to achieve in that four-year term? Well, particularly for Whipstick Ward, um, where unemployment's fairly high in that ward, I think jobs are pivotal to get, to get um, people into employment, into, into meaningful training and, you know, job skills. So that to me is very important. I think we've got to encourage new business into, into Bendigo that will um, cater for all different levels of employment needs. Because you don't necessarily have people that are going to be academic. You need mm -hmm. a whole broad brush well, approach to employment. Well, small business is a big part. Mm -hmm. Yes, small business is so important. And also in the rural areas, they're being left out a lot in the, in the council's decision making as far as job growth and, and employment goes. So, you know, people that live in those areas need more 
and I'd like to see that happen. And I'd like to see a lot more consultation with those smaller regions to sit down and say, find out what their needs are. You know, not dictate to them what they should have, but sit down and work out what it is they want and what they see as the problem. So they're the best ones to actually be able to tell us that. You talked, Julie, about uh, reflecting the views of the uh, and the wishes of the uh, ratepayers as a, an elected representative. We've had a mayor in Lisa Raffel have an open door policy, which mm -hmm. was fairly unique in council. Uh, we've had the citizens jury. Um, what would you do? What would be your best effort at trying to make sure that you're open to mm. uh, the feedback that ratepayers no doubt have every day? I think an open door policy is a great idea. I think there needs to be so much more um, connection with the community than what we've seen and, and restore, again, confidence and restore the, um, the relationship that should be there with the councillors. They are the key factor in, in that communication process. So let's have that. I'd like to see that happen again. Yeah. We had um, we had Councillor Rod uh, Campbell in here, and of course Rod, you know, incredible achievement from his point of view, particularly, or for him and his wife with the you know, the Disability. terrible uh, situation he's had to mm. cope with. But what that man's achieved is extraordinary. And I was interested to hear him reflect on his time in council. And one of the comments he made was, he said, "Look, it's funny how you hit council as a new councillor and you have all these great big ideas, but unless you can work together as a con uh, and uh, reach a consensus mm. and take that to the the population." you're not going to achieve anything. Are you confident that you can be part of that process and drawing on your experiences having worked there, working with the directors and the executive, how important are those elements in terms of having that consensus? It does have to be a broad brush approach. But I'll say it, go back to this, the original thing that I said and that is if as long as everybody is, is doing the right thing and working together, everybody should be able to work cohesively. We have a set of rules in place that people should be following and our duty is to act for the residents and then to work with the with the um, the executive part of council as well together as a unit mm. um, so if people do that I think everybody can, and I can certainly do that um, you know everything will go just well really well so let's hope we can achieve that this time because it hasn't it hasn't happened in the past so, Julie, some councillors running for this election, and there are quite a number of them, have formed uh, little alliances and uh, preferential voting uh, agreements between themselves and suggesting that. How are you party to that? Or do you have a block of candidates that you're sort of set up with in terms of trying to work together as a team? Not at all. No, I, I don't believe, for me, that that's the way to go as far as a councillor you know, making decisions for council. Um, in, people may be entitled to do that, but in my opinion, you should be at working on issues as an individual as well as a group, but you, know, you should be weighing up an issue as an individual and according to your own, own conscience on how that should be decided. Um, and, and that's looking at all aspects of, of that issue that affecting the, the community, the individuals, the council, the whole lot. So more reflecting the people that have put you into the job. That's right. The mm. residents must be represented. I just keep coming back to that same issue. If you're not doing what's in the best interest of the residents, then you're failing in your duty to them. Simple. So I think it just keeps coming back to that one issue over and over again. Julie, uh, you've built a bit of a profile around town. What sort of feedback are you getting from people at the moment as you move about the community mm. in terms of your campaigning? And Because we're getting very close now. Are you getting a good vibe? or? I've always had good support from the residents in Bendigo. There's very, very few times that I've ever had anyone that's been negative because I have tried to focus very much on the core issues and that is planning, legal and environmental issues. So, and that's what's carried us forward in the VCAT case and all those sorts of things. And I'll continue to do that. I think that is so important. If we are not challenging areas that we, we see are wrong, in the council, again, we are not doing our duty to represent people properly. So that's my view you know, on all of it. And it's, a, it's a core view that I, you know, I have, so. All right, Julie, <laughs> yeah, you're a devil for punishment because you've had a, a busy, <laughs> hectic two years yeah. and now throwing your hat in the ring for a council election yeah. with so many candidates in particular. Yeah. All the best with the campaigning and uh, win, lose or draw, we'd love to uh, think we'll have a catch up with you down the track as Thanks well. Thanks so much for having me on. Thank you for joining us today. That's Julie Hoskin running for Whipstick Ward and we'll continue to bring you new council candidates as they become available.